Dear all, welcome to the playlist of high voltage engineering. In this session, I will be discussing about various insulation test on circuit breaker and isolators. Before explaining the testing procedure, let us understand what are the importance of isolators and circuit breaker. Isolator is basically a disconnector switch which is used to isolate a section of the circuit from any energized conductor. That means it isolates source to the supply. Okay, whenever fault is occurred, source will be isolated from the load. In HV, isolators are used in conjunction with the circuit breaker. That is another peculiarity. Isolators open after a circuit breaker has opened the circuit and closes before the circuit breaker closes the circuit. First of all, circuit breaker is getting operated. Thereafter, isolator will be operated. That is a set That is a scenario. Isolator is operated after the circuit breaker to completely isolate the circuit. Okay, that is what is happening. Moreover, isolators used to isolate the circuit permanently where circuit breaker is mainly for isolating the circuit temporarily. That means circuit breaker will be acting for temporary fault and uh, isolator will be acted for permanent fault. So that's a peculiarity. Moving on to the importance of circuit breaker. Circuit breaker will make and break the circuit. A circuit breaker is a automatically operated electrical switch designed to protect an electrical circuit from damage caused by overload or short circuit. It is having moving contact and fixed contact. Whenever fault is occurred, moving contact will be separated from the fixed contact. That is what the exact working of circuit breaker. Its basic function is to detect a fault condition and interrupt the current flow. First of all, relay sends the fault and it gives the signal to the circuit breaker for opening so that source will be separated from the load or else we can say that the faulty portion will be isolated from the healthy portion. So these are the importance of circuit breaker. On load or high current breaking switch. It is basically on load or high breaking switch. Okay. So this is regarding the importance of isolators and circuit breaker. Furthermore, common tests are applicable for both circuit breaker and isolators. Let us understand the various testing procedures. Before that, why do we perform testing? Is the test is the testings are required? Is it necessary? Yes, obviously it is required. So why do you conduct the testing? What are the main objectives? What are the main agenda for conducting the test? To evaluate operating characteristics. Similarly, to study the constructional features. And you can say that to calculate the electrical parameters or electrical characteristics. So these are the main agenda for conducting the test. There are four conventional insulation testings are available. First of all, let us list out what are the four conventional tests which are applicable for both isolators and circuit breaker. The first one is the dielectric test or over voltage test. Another one is impulse test. Then the temperature rise test or you can call thermal test also and the mechanical test. These are the four major tests which are applicable for circuit breaker. Similarly, short circuit is also one of the popular tests which are comes under uh, the popular test. So finally, we can say that there are five tests which are comes under isolators and circuit breaker. Our job is to identify the peculiarity of conducting each test. What are the significance of conducting each test? Okay, now I would like to discuss about dielectric test. Dielectric test also can be called as over voltage test. What are the main objective of conducting dielectric test? In fact, the test comprises of over voltage withstand test of power frequency, testing of withstanding lightning and switching impulse voltage. Okay, whether the circuit breaker can withstand during a lightning and thundering condition. Okay, during the time of generation of high impulse voltage, how about the response of insulation part of circuit breaker that we are going to check. This test is done for checking the internal and external insulation level. We can make sure that whether the internal as well as external insulation level are proper or not. We can make sure that particular parameter. So that is why we are going to conduct this test. Apply the test voltage separately when the circuit breaker is in open and closed position. That is a main uh, procedure for doing this particular test. Okay. First and foremost, let me explain how you are going to check the internal insulation level of a circuit breaker. Let us have a, a brief discussion how to conduct this particular test. 
in order to check the internal insulation level let us follow the certain protocol in open position test voltage levels are 15 percentage higher than the test voltage used in the circuit breaker is closed okay that means voltage in open position should greater than 50 percentage of that of the closed position that's a condition for conducting uh, the internal insulation level checkup chance for line to ground flashover will be there so what to do for that to avoid the flashover the circuit breaker is mounted on the insulation above the ground so that we can get rid of the chance of a uh, line to ground flashover so the insulation level of a body of circuit breaker is little bit increased or little bit raised uh, we can measure the requirement of insulation level based on the flashover so let us continue in this type of internal insulation level you are going to maintain this kind of condition and you will be conducting the test make sure that no flashover should be occurred okay similarly regarding wet dielectric test the main purpose of conducting the best the wet dielectric test is to check the external insulation level the provided insulation in the external part of circuit breaker is good enough to maintain or not that we are going to check we are going to verify that it is used for outdoor switch gear okay similarly the external insulation is provided for two minutes while the rated service voltage is applied this duration you have to remember our voltage is maintained for uh, 30 seconds test will be conducting within 30 seconds so insulation will be provided for two minutes afterwards you will be conducting the test over voltage will be maintained for 30 seconds make sure that no fl flashover should be encountered if any flashover is occurred you can say that the external insulation which you have provided to your test circuit breaker is not sufficient so you have to replace the particular test piece okay so that's a, a scenario so we have done both internal insulation test as well as external insulation test for both the cases we need to make sure that no flashover should be occurred remember in case of internal insulation testing i already discussed you have to remember the condition this is your condition for conducting the internal insulation testing okay now let us discuss about procedure for conducting the external insulation level i already explained the duration okay so over voltage has to be maintained for 30 seconds so you have to maintain the insulation for two minutes these are the duration now let us discuss the procedure the test voltage is applied for a period of one minute between uh, phases with the circuit breaker is closed note on this point similarly phases and earth with the circuit breaker is opened Similarly, across the terminals with the circuit breaker is open. So, three scenario or three conditions you have to follow up. Perfect breaker should free from flashover or puncture. If it is air blast circuit breaker, it should be totally free from a flashover. If I talk about the other type of circuit breaker such as oil, oil type circuit breaker, it is also again free from uh, the flashover. So, likewise, we have to uh, confirm the rigidity of the circuit breaker okay whether circuit breakers are provided with a suitable amount of insulation or not the test voltage should be standard 1 bar 50 microsecond wave okay the test volt which you are going to use is having the magnitude of 1 bar 50 microsecond wave here 1 can be called 1 microsecond can be called wave front and 50 can be called as wave tail it's some kind some sort of impulse waveform has to be applied so this is about the procedure for conducting a wet dielectric test. So three points has to be remembered for conducting this particular test. Let us discuss about the second procedure that is known as impulse test. Obviously we require impulse generator. With the help of impulse generator you need to produce the certain amount of impulse waveform. So this is mainly used to check the performance under over voltage due to switching operation of circuit breaker. Circuit breaker is mainly dealing with the switching operation. Whenever fault is occurred, the moving part will be isolated from the healthy portion. Once the fault is cleared, it will be rejoining. So this process will be continuously uh, taking place. Almost 500 times of opening and closing will be taken place frequently. Okay. So, so that we need to maintain that whether the performance is comfortable during uh, switching operation or not. Will it be operated during switching operation properly or not? 
so you have to generate the impulse waveform based on the requirement okay so check the performance of switching operation of circuit breaker by using a standard impulse waveform so with the help of impulse voltage generator you can generate certain amount of impulse waveform by adjusting wavefront resistor and the tail resistor okay you can uh, make a suitable adjustment ensure the successful operation of circuit breaker you can apply you can operate the impulse waveform and uh, make sure that circuit breaker will be operated smooth okay smooth operation of circuit breaker has to be ensured uh, in this impulse test if it is like that we can say that uh, your circuit breaker can be able to operate during uh, lightning and thundering or moreover it is uh, most comfortable during various switching operation anyway circuit breaker is basically deal with the uh, switching operation so you have to make sure that uh, it will perform well during switching operation there should not be any damage or uh, it should be operated smoothly during the switching operation so that's a main objective of conducting the impulse test we require impulse generator so we can generate uh, the certain amount of impulse waveform okay regarding temperature rise test this is a third procedure third method in temperature rise test uh, make sure that the circuit breaker will operate smoothly during the high temperature operation that means this tester makes sure that the circuit breaker are designed according to the specification that's the main uh, motto for conducting the test whenever the circuit breaker is operating or it may be operating in a high temperature condition high temperature condition will be operated at that time it should be withstand or the excess of temperature rise moreover we need to make sure that it has been designed according to the specification or not that is another importance of temperature rise test so checking the thermal behavior of the circuit breaker we are going to check the thermal behavior of the circuit breaker by conducting the temperature rise test test can be done with the help of thermocouple so we require a thermocouple it will act as a transducer or we can call a sensor correct so it depends on the level of temperature it is going to produce certain amount of current or voltage okay electrical quantity mechanical quantity that will be converted into electrical quantity that is known as thermocouple okay it will obey the principle of seebeck effect thermocouple will be mainly obeying the rule of uh, seebeck effect it operates based on the seebeck effect uh, so for there is a standard condition at 40 degree celsius the standard current rating will be 800 ampere so this is your standard condition based on that you are going to check whether the a circuit breaker can operate over temperature or not high temperature condition by connecting a resistance parallel with a fixed and moving contact we can measure the requirement of contact resistance similarly heat dissipation so in order to measure heat dissipa dissipation as well as the requirement of contact resistance or arc resistance what you can do is you have to connect a resistance parallel with the fixed and moving contact so that is another procedure however mainly we are concentrating whether the circuit breaker can be operated with a certain amount of temperature with a definite amount of temperature or not what is the thermal behavior so that you can use thermocouple so by using the thermocouple that you can make out similarly there is a standard protocol at uh, for 40 degree celsius the standard current rating will be 800 ampere that you have to keep in your mind so this is regarding the temperature rise test i would like to explain about mechanical test the circuit breaker must open and close at the correct speed and perform such operation without any mechanical damage so that, that that's a main agenda for conducting the mechanical test okay the operation should be very much comfortable as well as no mechanical failure should be occurred it is mainly based on the bs116 1952 standards according to the specification 500 opening and closing should be done without any failure if you produce a new test from the industry outlet new test circuit breaker from the industry outlet that has to be produced 500 opening and closing without any failure if anything is observed if any uh, observation which is not comfortable that if you have observed anything that means your test piece is not fine so the fine operation at least 500 opening and closing should be taken place without damaging of fixed or moving contact so that's the scenario uh, for this standard okay mechanical test gives the details on material also what type of material you are going to ma make that particular fixed contact and moving contact okay so these are the importance of mechanical test it helps the lifespan of the circuit breaker 
Moreover, you can predict the life expectancy of your circuit breaker. Okay, there are many opening and closing procedures should be taken place for a particular test piece. At least 500 opening and closer should be successful. That you have to make sure. Then only you can use that test piece for the real time application. So this is regarding mechanical test. Now I would like to discuss about short circuit test. There are two segments in short circuit test. Why we are conducting the short circuit test? It is one of the most important test for the circuit breaker to check mainly the primary performance of the circuit breaker and also ability to safely interrupt the fault current. You are going to check how well the circuit breaker is going to operate. Is it possible to perform the circuit breaker in a faulty condition? Will it be operated for in a faulty condition or not? You are going to check. Short circuit test comprises of determining making and breaking capacities of circuit breaker at various load current and rated voltage. Mainly, it is going to decide breaking and making capacities. I will let you know what do we mean by making and breaking capacity thereafter. However, we can define making capacity. Making capacity of a circuit breaker is the maximum current which the breaker can conduct at instant of closing. That is known as making capacity. Regarding breaking capacity, breaking capacity of a circuit breaker refers to the maximum current in the RMS value the circuit breaker can interrupt. So this is regarding making capacity. So we can able to identify making and breaking capacity if you conduct the short circuit test. That is a peculiarity. In the earlier test, we cannot able to find out making and breaking capacity. Moreover, identification of performance parameters also difficult. But we can fulfill those requirements with the help of short circuit test. Uh, in case of isolators, the short circuit test, you can call SC test also, short circuit test determine the capacity to carry rated short circuit current for a given duration. So that is also obtained from this particular segment. So this is regarding uh, the importance of short circuit test. So short circuit test is unavoidable in case of circuit breaker. Now let us understand the two procedure which I mentioned bit earlier. There are two procedures for conducting the short circuit test. The first procedure is direct test. Regarding the next procedure that is known as synthetic test. These are the two main procedures which are comes under short circuit test. First and foremost thing I would like to discuss about direct test. What do you mean by direct test? Regarding the direct test, we can conduct by two methods. The first method is by using a short circuit generator as the source. So we have to use the short circuit generator. So short circuit generator, you can able to create the artificial fault. Okay, this basically uh, a Induction motor driven by induction motor and the voltage can be varied by using field excitation. That is a scenario of a short circuit generator. You can able to create the artificial fault by varying the field excitation. Based on the requirement, you can able to produce the field excitation. It is driven by induction motor. Second method is by using power utility system or network as the source. So you have to do the real time testing. So you have the particular network. By using the network, you are going to connect a test circuit breaker over the network. Then you are going to evaluate the performance. Okay, these are the mainly two procedures. Overall system includes master circuit breaker and test circuit breaker. Two circuit breaker you are going to use. Master circuit breaker is mainly used for the safety purpose. Anyway, you are using a real-time network. Then in that you will be placing uh, master circuit breaker and uh, test circuit breaker. Your main aim is to check your performance of test circuit breaker. Once the test circuit breaker is successful, no use of master circuit breaker. Suppose test circuit breaker fails, uh, master circuit breaker should be operated. You have to save the network. Okay, so that is why we are going to do uh, these two procedures. Uh, regarding synthetic test, there are many procedures for conducting different parameters. Okay, so the first procedure is direct testing in the network or field. The second procedure is direct testing in short circuit test laboratory. You are talking about short circuit test laboratory. I will let you know what do you mean by short circuit test laboratory. What are the segments which are included in the short circuit test laboratory. Then synthetic testing of circuit breaker. Importance we are going to discuss. Then composite testing. Why composite testing are required? Then we will be learning about unit testing. Then asymmetrical test. These are the different tests which are comes under synthetic test. Okay, these are the procedure. There are six procedure. Let us understand those six procedure step by step. Okay, so we will be measuring different parameters of circuit breaker by conducting.
As far as synthetic tests are concerned, I will be moving on the first testing procedure that is direct testing in the network or field. So moving on the procedure for conducting direct test or network or field. The circuit breaker are sometimes tested for their ability to make or break in the circuit under normal load conditions or under short circuit conditions in the network itself. Okay, we should have the definite, definite network which is having certain capacity. That means we are conducting actual or real time test in the network. Okay, you have a network, you are going to place the circuit breaker. Whenever fault comes, you are going to monitor how well it is going to operate. How about the operation? We can test the special occasions like very short line fault, then breaking of charging current of long line, etc. These are the speciality. It depends on your network which you are going to use. Okay, if the network which is having frequent fault, that is well and good to check the nature of circuit breaker, to check the performance of circuit breaker. It is possible to study the thermal and dynamic behavior of short circuit current. That is also feasible. What is the main drawback of direct testing in the network or field? As I mentioned a bit early that you are using your own network for testing your circuit breaker. If the network which is having a probability of occurrence of different fault, then that is well and good for the test object or test network, test piece. Yeah, suppose if you are using a network which doesn't have any fault condition or any other external condition, then we cannot able to test properly. That depends on your network, which network you are going to use. That means the circuit breaker can be tested at only a given rated voltage in the network capacity. That's a limitation. Okay, that is why uh, the use of this kind of test that is very limited. However, we can use. Now I will be discussing about the second procedure that is direct testing in short circuit test laboratory. So here I would like to discuss about what do we mean by short circuit test laboratory. In order to test the circuit breaker at different voltage and at different short circuit current, the short circuit laboratories are provided. Earlier in case of direct network or field, we have to restrict our uh, test object in a particular network. So that's the main drawback. So we cannot able to create different fault. That's the main problem. So to overcome those difficulty, we are going to use direct testing in the short circuit test laboratory. What are the main segments which are comes under short circuit laboratories? It comprises of short circuit generator. Okay, then resistors will be there reactors and measuring devices. These are the main uh, segments which are comes under short circuit laboratories. Initially, a make switch will be available. So make switch initiate, initiate or uh, initialize the short circuit. Okay, it will create the fault by using the make switch. The master, master circuit breaker isolate the test device from the source. There are two circuit breaker, your test circuit breaker and the master circuit breaker. Suppose if your test circuit breaker fails, your master circuit breaker will be operated. Suppose if your master circuit breaker is operated, that means your test circuit breaker is not fine. There is a problem with your test circuit breaker and immediately you have to replace that test piece. That test piece is not suitable for real time application. That point also one of the remarkable thing. So this is regarding the short circuit laboratory. Let us observe the diagram related to short circuit testing laboratory. In short circuit laboratory, uh, we have short circuit generator, you can directly observe, this is your short circuit generator. The main purpose of the short circuit generator is to create artificial fault. Then we have your test piece, you can observe this is your test piece. So I will be showing the test piece. Okay. Now I would like to introduce a reactor here, reactor. To change the value of current, fault current, you can use the reactor. Okay. Then, there is a backup breaker is available. It is also known as master circuit breaker. As you can see, this is a master circuit breaker. Okay. In case your test circuit breaker failed, master circuit breaker will be operated and it prevents the additional fault and save the circuit. Making switch that is going to initialize. Okay. The main purpose of making switch is to initialize or initiate the fault. That's the main purpose of uh, making switch. So this is a capacitance which is associated with that particular circuit that means short circuit laboratory. 
So this is the main source. As I said bitterly that short circuit generator that's the main source. First of all, you are initiate you are initiating or you are beginning with you are creating an artificial fault by using short circuit generator. That means it's a basic main switch. May uh, the making switch is the main switch. You are actually initialization. You are doing the uh, initialization of the fault. You are initiating a fault or short circuit. So by closing this, you are uh, what I can say. You are going to initial initialize or initiating a fault. Suppose if your test device, if your test circuit breaker is healthy, obviously it is going to operate. Here you can see the CT that is for the uh, current measurement measuring unit. Okay, so once the fault is encountered or fault is observed, definitely the circuit breaker is getting operated. The current level will be available from the current transformer. So making switch is only for the close or turning on the circuit, uh, then uh, you will be sensing the current with the help of CT. If the fault is severe, obviously uh, the test device, test circuit breaker is getting operated. It will be isolating uh, the moving contact from the fixed contact. There is isolation. That means entire supply will be uh, turned off. So that's a speciality. Suppose I'll be telling the opposite end. In the opposite end, after meshing the current, if the test device failed, it never operate. It will it never operate. It will keep as it is. It will keep as it is. At the same time, what is going to happen? The backup breaker is getting operated. The backup breaker is getting operated. That means your test device is having a failure. Your test device is failed for this test. So this is the way how you are going to conduct. Short, uh, the test at short circuit laboratory. Here I have written the importance of backup breaker. Isolate the test device from the source. If the test device failed, definitely master circuit breaker is getting operated. So these are the speciality of uh, short circuit laboratory. By using the short circuit test laboratory, we can conduct the test. So this is the way how we are going to verify the performance of the test device, test, test circuit breaker. Okay, I hope you understood. Now I will be moving on the third procedure that is known as synthetic testing of circuit breaker. Let us understand the importance of doing synthetic test, why it is required. Here we are going to use two sources. One supply provide AC current, other will be provided high voltage that is basically DC. The current and Recovery voltage waveform across the test circuit breaker can be determined by using the test. You are going to analyze the behavior of arc. Suppose a fault is occurred, moving contact will be separated from the fixer contact, there will be an arc. So you are going to study the current and uh, recovery voltage waveforms of that particular region. So that's the main peculiarity of synthetic test. You can study the behavior of that particular wave, uh, particular situation. During the fault, the moving contact will be isolated from the fixer contact. At that time, you are going to do the study on arc. So this is a setup which you are going to provide the synthetic testing of circuit breaker. Uh, we have the main switch. You can see the main switch. Uh, then making circuit breaker. And we have the uh, test circuit breaker. You can observe T. I have indicated as T. That is known as test circuit breaker. And we have the reactor. Uh, then a trigger gap and uh, supply from other side. One is AC, other will be DC, obviously DC. Okay. First and foremost thing, you need to do the suitable testing by placing your test object. Main switch should be on. Uh, make sure that how the behavior of circuit breaker, test circuit breaker. If any fault is encountered, obviously the test circuit breaker is getting operated. So suppose if it is failed, the main circuit making CB will be operated. Anyway, we can say that if any fault is occurred, the moving contact of test circuit breaker will be isolated from the fixer contact. So you can do the analysis. You can do the analysis uh, by collecting the current through the inductor and voltage across capacitors. There are voltages are available. See, voltages are available. You can do the analysis by uh, measuring current through the inductor and voltage across capacitor. Okay, current and voltage parameters can be very clearly observed. Okay, so that's a speciality of doing uh, the synthetic testing. That means thus we can do the analysis of the behavior of arc. So this is how we are going to do the synthetic testing of circuit breaker. Now let us 
understand the importance of composite testing why we are conducting composite testing and what are the major procedures which are involved in composite testing the breaker is tested under rated voltage level the breaker tested under reduced voltage level for checking the breaking capacity the main purpose of doing the composite testing is to check the breaking capacity the main drawback what are the main drawback this method doesn't give a proper information about circuit breaker performance only we can check the breaking capacity so that's a peculiarity of doing composite testing okay so we can conclude that composite test is mainly determined mainly used to determine the breaking capacity of the circuit breaker moving on to unit testing let us understand the significance of unit testing why we are conducting the unit testing as we can see that large circuit breaker testing under high voltage is very essential and uh, this can be done for a uh, very large and uh, high voltage circuit breaker so normally it is mainly applicable for testing above 220 kv more than one break is provided per port so that's a procedure for conducting the unit testing checking the condition of arc you can check the behavior of arc similar to synthetic test study the features of arc between fixer and moving contacts the unit test will be really helpful for identify the arc behavior okay let us move on to asymmetrical test why we are going to conduct asymmetrical test here one test cycle is repeated for asymmetrical breaking capacity checking dc component in between fixer and moving contact you are going to study the waveforms which are associated with fixer and moving contact once the fault is occurred once the fault is occurred obviously the moving contact will be apart from the fixed contact at that time you are going to evaluate the dc component how many how much of dc component is available in between those two components let us understand the test condition how to conduct the test dc component at the instant of contact separation is not less than 50 percentage of ac component that is the requirement the requirement of test is such a way that the dc component at the instant of contact separation is not less than 50 percentage of ac component that is the requirement of the test if the test condition failed definitely you need to replace the test circuit breaker otherwise you can accept the test piece so this is the importance of doing asymmetric test okay now let us conclude initially uh, we have understood the importance of isolators and circuit breaker how about the operation of isolators and circuit breaker thereafter i have explained the importance of insulation level for the both the switching devices initially i have mentioned there are four conventional tests like uh, dielectric test or over voltage test then impulse test the temperature rise test and uh, mechanical test in addition to that one more important testing is available that is known as short circuit test it is having several procedures it is somewhat advanced as compared to conventional type of test in the short circuit test we familiar there are two procedures like direct test and synthetic test in order to conduct synthetic test we need to follow different procedures if you follow different procedures you will be getting a to z performance parameters of circuit breaker you can go for different levels of testing okay so this is regarding the synthetic test for further information please do refer the following test books you will be getting more information rather than my presentation thank you very much for watching this video if you found this channel useful please don't forget to subscribe Finally thank you very much for your continuous support